It's been a good year for Russia's ultra-rich. Despite a weakening ruble and the threat of U.S. sanctions looming over the country's economy, Russia's billionaire class has swelled to 117 tycoons, up from 99 last year, worth a collective $584 billion, up from $385 billion. Today, we will check out what it's like to be a billionaire in Russia. Before starting the video, please subscribe to the channel and click on the notification icon so you would get notified when we upload the next video. Number 8. Introduction Russia's top 10 billionaires are all self-made businessmen who made their fortunes in the heady and sometimes chaotic business world that followed the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991. Many state enterprises were privatized at that time, and Russia was ripe for entrepreneurs snapping up formerly state-owned assets in metals, mining, and the financial sector. The top 10 billionaires on this list all started their rise to wealth during the 1990s. Now, many are global names in the world of business, owning diverse interests from global mining companies and banks to basketball and football clubs. Some of the men on this list are more obscure than others, lone players in business. Others are business partners and associates. While some have been more quiet spenders, others have been more lavish with their wealth, buying yachts, multi-million dollar homes, and hunting lodges, as well as dating beautiful women. Unlike the 19th century American robber barons who built their monopolies from the wilderness, Russia's oligarchs amassed their control and wealth from existing enterprises. With few exceptions, Russia's oligarchs built nothing new. The men had varying backgrounds. Some were factory managers who, during Russia's transition, forced their employees to sell them their shares in the once state-owned enterprises. Others were senior government officials, while yet others were underground businessmen on the margins of society, but all shared a common thirst for money and power, the latter of which included establishing or maintaining connections to the political elite in Russia, a country where the rule of law is still sometimes trumped by the rule of in-laws. In Russia today, just a handful of oligarchs control 85% of the value of the country's leading private companies. And with their multi-billion dollar fortunes, they are joining the top ranks of the world's wealthiest people. Number 7. Alexei Mordashov Billionaire Alexei Mordashov is nicknamed The Tank, according to the BBC, a moniker he may have earned from his relentless rise to power and wealth. Born in 1965, Mordashov is the son of mill workers and started his career at the Sharapovitz steel mill in northwestern Russia in 1988. Mordashov made his fortune after the privatization of Sharapovitz, in which he was a major shareholder following the fall of the Soviet Union. Sharapovitz was renamed Severstal and is now one of the largest steelmakers in Russia. Mordashov was made chief financial officer of Severstal in 1992 and chief executive in 2006. He owns 82% of the company, according to the Financial Times. He is also the chairman of the World Steel Association and holds degrees from both the Leningrad Institute of Engineering and Economics and the Newcastle Business School of Northumbria University in the UK. Number 6. Vladimir Lysen Steel Baron Vladimir Lysen, who started his career as a mechanic in a Soviet coal mine, was ranked Russia's richest man in 2010 by business magazine Finance. A decline in steel prices has chipped away at his fortunes, however, putting him in fifth place according to WealthX's research. Lysen is the majority shareholder in the Volopetsk, one of the largest steel producers in Russia. However, his company, Fletcher Group Holdings, also invests in energy, oil and gas exploration, banking, and real estate. Interestingly, given the recent furor over capital flight from Russia to Cyprus, the Fletcher Group has a statutory seat and administrative office in Nicosia, Cyprus, according to its website. Lysen also owns First Cargo Company, Russia's biggest railway operator, and has incorporated it into his transportation holding company, Universal Cargo Logistics Holding. The 57-year-old is a keen hunter of deer and grouse and built one of Europe's largest shooting range complexes in Lysianora, near Moscow. Lysen has been president of the Russian Shooting Union since 2002. Number 5. Vladimir Potanin 
Vladimir Potanin, founder of Enteros, an investment company worth approximately $15 billion with assets in metals and mining, real estate, tourism, infrastructure, and media. Potanin is also chief executive of Norilsk Nickel, the world's largest producer of nickel and palladium, according to his own website. Potanin graduated in 1983 with a degree in international economics. He spent the subsequent seven years working at the Ministry of Foreign Economic Relations and served as first deputy prime minister between 1996 and 1997, following the breakup of the Soviet Union. Potanin is also the founder of one of Russia's largest private philanthropic foundations, which he funds with his personal assets, according to the foundation's website. The Vladimir Potanin Foundation supports higher education and arts and cultural projects in Russia and has an annual budget of about $10 million. Number four, Leonid Mikkelsen. Leonid Mikkelsen is chief executive and a major shareholder of Novatech, Russia's largest gas producer, plus chairman of petrochemicals company Cyborg. He began his career as a civil servant and foreman of a construction and assembling company in the Tyumen region, east of Moscow. In 1987, Mikkelsen inherited the management of Novatech, which built pipelines, roads, and industrial facilities at the time, according to Forbes. Between 2010 and 2011, the married father of one bought a 57.5% stake in petrochemicals firm Cyborg, which operates in 60 countries and employs 30,000 people. Number three, Vajit Alekparov. Alekparov is the head of Lukoil, Russia's largest independent energy company and author of a book called Oil of Russia, Past, Present, and Future. The former oil rig worker graduated from an oil and chemistry institute in Azerbaijan in 1974 and was previously the deputy minister in the Soviet Ministry of Oil and Gas. According to Forbes, Alek Perov willed his nearly 21% stake in Lukoil to his only son Yusuf in 2013, with the caveat that his son cannot sell it, meaning the Alek Perov family will remain Lukoil's biggest shareholder. ExxonMobil was the second largest investor in Alekparov until it sold out in 2010, according to Forbes. Alekparov bought some shares in Lukoil following the sale, which he sold for a 3% profit in 2011, earning him $350 million, said Forbes. Number two, next generation of Russian billionaires. The next generation of billionaires are definitely going to inherit their parents' wealth. With the way the country is today, we might not see many rags-to-riches stories anymore, since the Russian middle class is kind of stuck thanks to the pandemic. The children and grandchildren of these billionaires are getting educated in boarding schools in countries like Great Britain, and they are learning new ways to grow their family business. Sooner or later, this first generation will inevitably leave business. Some of them will successfully transfer their wealth to their families, i.e. the next generation of wealth possessors. Some others may lose their wealth due to inheritance disputes, corporate conflicts, or the successor's inability to manage wealth properly. A successful transfer of private wealth to the next generation is of interest not only to those who inherit or manage these assets, but also to the economy as a whole. Number one, Russian oligarch. Finally, being a billionaire in Russia means not only do you have ties to some of the finer things in life, but you might also have some political ties as well. Russia has an oligarchy, which means that the country is mainly run by powerful politicians and rich people who act within their own interest. When you have so much cash, it's not hard to easily work your way through the political ladder. Russian oligarchs are business oligarchs of the former Soviet republics who rapidly accumulated wealth during the era of Russian privatization in the aftermath of the dissolution of the Soviet Union in the 1990s. The failing Soviet state left the ownership of state assets contested, which allowed for informal deals with former USSR officials, mostly in Russia and Ukraine, as a means to acquire state property. Historian Edward L. Keenan has drawn a comparison between the current Russian phenomena of oligarchs and the system of powerful boyars, which emerged in the late medieval Muscovy. Prominent oligarchs of the Putin era include Roman Abramovich, Alexander Abramov, Oleg Deripaska, Mikhail Pokorov, Alisher Yusumov, German Khan, Viktor Vekelsberg, Leonid Mikkelsen, Fajit Alekparov, Mikhail Friedman, Vladimir Potanin, Peter Avin, and Vitaly Malkin. Between 2000 and 2004, Putin apparently engaged in a power struggle with some oligarchs, reaching a grand bargain with them. This bargain allowed the oligarchs to maintain their powers in exchange for their explicit support of, and alignment with, 
Putin's government. Many more business people have become oligarchs during Putin's time in power, and often due to personal relations with Putin. Do share with us in the comments what are your thoughts about Russian billionaires. Thanks for watching.